Welcome back to our discussion of a firm analysis. The previous lecture looked at can we tell if a firm's existing strategy and the strategies of their competitors are working. Step two is something called SWOT or strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Again, the industry analysis focused on, focused on the external environment. We're looking at the internal environment. Go back to our standard model here. We're looking at the industry capabilities responsible for those five in the industry analysis, just responsible for three things in the company analysis or firm situation. Again, if we do these well, they'll help us identify options for the company and help us choose the best strategy for the company moving forward. So again, SWOT's fairly, con fairly um, well known. You've probably heard of this acronym if you've taken classes over in the Carlson School of Business. But as we think about a strategy, we have to make sure that our strengths and weaknesses of a firm match up with the opportunities in the marketplace and possible threats or challenges to its well-being. So sometimes the word threat, people have more difficulty trying to understand that. Oftentimes we'll see the word challenges used instead of threats. What is a strength? Well, strength is something I know how to do very well as a firm. It makes me very competitive. I've, we're going to talk about competencies here shortly, but it's, do I have know-how? Can I do something more than anybody else? Do I have valuable physical assets? Are my factories in top-notch condition? Are my trucks, my rail lines, whatever those things are, are they in the best possible uh, condition? What about my, my human assets? Do I have long-term labor contracts with my employees if they happen to be in a union? Do I have a workforce that's experienced? Do I have organizational assets? Can I get things done quickly? Can I move quickly in terms of change inside an organization? Do I have any tangible assets like patents or trademarks that other people don't have? Do I have an attribute that places me in a position of market advantage? So am I well known in being the first person to move and as, a, as the marketing innovator? Am I able to get alliances of cooperative ventures that other people don't have access to? So when I ask students to do a SWOT analysis, oftentimes they can identify strengths. The thing they have difficulty with is a weakness because firms don't talk about their weaknesses. Things they do poorly or something that makes it at a disadvantage. And so you oftentimes have to look very, very closely to identify a weakness. So maybe they have deficiencies in know-how or expertise or, or competencies. They can't do things. They can't go to, go to market very quickly. Maybe they lack trademarks or access to patents. Maybe they can't make decisions very quickly. So the, the opposites of the things and strengths would become weaknesses for a firm. I'm not going to go through all of these things, but I want to focus real quickly on, as we think about doing a SWOT analysis, what are we looking for? Strengths. Look, does the firm have a good financial condition? Great brand name rep reputation. Proprietary technologies, recognized as market leaders. Good advertising, good customer service. From a weakness perspective, do I, does it appear like I lack clear direction? Are my facilities old? Do I have lots of debt? Do I have higher costs relative to my rivals? Am I constantly having problems? Do I have food recalls all the time? Are my profits lower than normal? So those are ways to think about weaknesses. Opportunities are things that come out of our industry analysis. So is there a market segment that I can serve additional customer groups? Can I expand new geographic regions? Can I make a wider product line by changing my inputs? Can I take skills that I do very well and move them onto new products? Can I use vertical integration? Can I take MS or market share from rivals because they're not doing things very well? If I'm a mature industry, can I acquire my rivals? Then consolidate. Can I use alliances or joint ventures or JVs to expand coverage? Can I use my brand name and image on different products? Think about Coca-Cola, for example. They've now changed all their bottles. They had the, what we call Red Coke, which is the, the classic, we have the black Coke, which is the Coke Zero. 
We had the green coke, which is the coke that was made with stevia as a replacement. And then we've got the silver, which is the Diet Coke. So they're using that name and image of the Coke on all these different types of products. External challenges or threats, new competitors, loss of sales because of substitutes, slowing market growth, exchange rate issues, trade policies. We've talked about those in previous lectures. Costly new regulations. We see regula regulations a big issue on food safety and food quality. Where are we in the business cycle? Are we coming out of a business cycle? Are we in a recession? Do my customers or suppliers have leverage over me because they're getting larger in size? Or because mergers or consolidations have happened? Do we have demographic changes going on? I don't want to make a big deal on this, but I could very well ask you a multiple choice question about competencies. So competence is an internal activity, a strength that I can do better than other internal activities. So think about a company in food manufacturing. I buy things, my inputs. I transform those inputs into different products in a food manufacturing plant. I then take those plants and distribute them outside of my factory. Those are three different broad activities. Which one of those three am I doing the best? That's what I would think of when it comes to competence. A core competence is something I do very, very well and it gives me an advantage. Increasingly in the food economy, we're seeing logistics and access to a segregated supply chain, which we talked about previously. Having complete control over the information from the production all the way through the labeling of my product. And can I do this really, really well more than other people? So it's difficult to become a distinctive competence. I can identify competence in a firm. I can identify core competence. It's going to be harder to come up with distinctive competencies um, because everyone's going to want those. So we want to take something that's an co existing competence and make it a core. So it really becomes part of our strategy moving forward. We, we, we have to collaborate. So what you're seeing is firms move to a segregated supply chain. You can't do that unless you've got collaboration. If I'm going to buy organic products, I've got to make sure that the value that organic is kept in every single part of the organization, all the way through the food manufacturing process. I've got to make sure that it's tested for organic, that people know that there's no residues, that when I sell it, that it truly is an organic product. And that's going to require collaboration all across the organization. A lot of times, these are existing in people and our ability to get things done. You're not going to see these typically on an asset or balance sheet. And if we can do this, it's going to give us a competitive capability that our competition can't have. So what are types of core competencies? Manufacturing skills to create high quality. Filling customer orders accurately and swiftly developing new products, after sales service. You know, for me personally, I don't mind paying a little more as long as I know I don't have to go back and have a warranty claim after the sale. Yes, I want to make the investments in getting my oil change done in a vehicle, for example, and things, but I don't want something to have to go back and have to break down after the fact. Good retail locations. Do I, do I go to malls or do I go to small stores where I can park in front? If I, want to, if I want to attract older people, I have to have make sure I've got handicap stalls and make it easier for people to get into my store. That's different than building a great big mall and having something in the middle part of the store. Popular features, merchandising, expertise in important technologies. Can I use multiple technologies and create all new types of products? So again, we've talked about this distinctive competence. As we think about identifying strategic options, typically we're trying to take those things that are competencies, making them core, figuring out ways to make them distinctive in a new option to give us a type of a strategy approach moving forward. So as we think about something that's a strength or a competence and something that's going to become part of a strategy and that's going to have a sustainability, 
Are, is what we're doing hard to copy? Can other people do this or not? Does it have staying power? Is it durable? Can we, this happen year after year? Is it really, really competitively superior? We can't just tell ourselves it's going to be. We have to really identify, can it be competitively superior to what something else is doing? And if we do all this, can someone mimic us with a different type of capability? So just because we go through all this stuff and create something, could the competition do something different and, and put us in a, in a bad situation? We talked about threats or challenges on a previous slide. Here they are again. So this is our SWOT analysis. We're identifying strengths and weaknesses to take advantage of industry opportunities or challenges or threats, using trying to measure what's a competence. Can I make that a core competence and a strategy? Can I make it distinctive and do something that no one else can do?